All right, Cam, let's start off with the big question. Why was Arizona State the right place for you? I mean, honestly, it just felt like home while I was out there. Um, I guess it's like that one saying, you know, when you know, you know. Um, and that's kind of just how I felt once I uh, touched foot on the campus and I saw everything that Arizona State has to offer me. Um, and another big factor that was important to me was that my family felt like it was home. Um, and once I saw that in the, once I saw that they felt like it was home for them and for me, um, that was a big deal because um, I want them to be comfortable as well. You know, when they come to visit me and everything and uh, feel like Tempe is a good place to live and everything. So, you, know, we, you mentioned you're coming in here on a visit. You get to see things up close. You get to meet these people, you know, face to face, you know, kind right. of during the course of those few days on that official visit. What were some of the, the things that really kind of made the biggest impressions on you? I mean, I would say at the dinner, uh, I remember one of the steak dinners that they took us to. Uh, Coach Dillingham, he was just walking around and showing everybody his cards and his card tricks and everything. And <laughs> it's not something you would expect from a head coach. You could tell that he's real down to earth and not really, uh, I guess, standoffish, I guess you would say. Like, he's real down to earth and he could, he, he really likes his players and he's a player's coach for sure. Um, another thing, I guess, would be uh, that – the coach that was taking me around, uh, Coach Silver, he really <clears throat> he made a great impression on my family, and he was just he just felt like he was like my older brother and like another you know role model that I could look up to, which is really important uh, for me and my family. Uh, you know, everybody while we were there made us feel comfortable and made us feel like uh, we were part of the family and everything. And that's like I said, that was that's really important to me and um, I value family and everything. So that that, that was real important. You mentioned Coach Dillingham being uh, kind of having that down to earth approach and that genuineness is something that's kind of really jumped out to me over the last couple of years and talking to players and, and recruits. But when you look at Kenny Dillingham, the young leader of a major college football program, what kind of jumps out to you? And what kind of impressions do you have about uh, Coach Dillingham's ability to lead a big time college program? I mean, I think he's a great leader from what I can see, what I've uh, experience so far. I think he's a great leader. I mean, I, I I think there's a reason why he's one of the youngest head coaches in college football. I mean, he's he's definitely earned that title. He's definitely uh, done what he's done to get to where he's at right now. And I think he's, like I said, he's a great leader. Um, and it's just the little things, honestly, the little things like when I when you go into team meetings and when he meets with us, like he makes sure he makes sure to make sure that you feel like you're a part of the family and that you know you're not just a player to him or he's not just the coach but he's a he's a mentor for you and he's you know he's that kind of father figure for some guys or older brother figure you know whatever it may be he's family um it seems like and you know that's that's real important to some guys and i know for sure that's important to me so i mean he's he's a great leader from what i can see um and i, I feel like more so not just on the field like he's a great leader on the field all the stuff everybody does you know he's he, he he's well respected so uh but i guess i i think where he separates himself from a lot of guys is just off the field so so outside of you know the coaching staff and, and the support staff there when you got to talk to the players and, and meet them and kind of just get a, a feel for kind of the, the vibe around the program. What's your feeling on kind of the culture of Sun Devil football and, and what Kenny Dillingham's trying to instill in Tempe? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great culture. I think that a lot of the guys um, speak really highly of Coach Dillingham. I think they all say like, how like the way he is he's the way he was acted um while the recruits are on visits or whatever it may be like to the rest of uh the public or whatever that's how he really is behind closed doors and I, I got to see that a little bit i mean you know you don't get to see a whole lot obviously uh of you can't really get a true like evaluation of how somebody is in three days but you can definitely get a sense of it you know and i and i felt that for sure um yeah so I, I think the players, to answer your question, I mean, I think the players speak very highly of him and of the rest of the coaching staff. And I think that that culture of that family culture is real is real um, important to, to uh, Coach Dillingham and the rest of the staff. Of course, you're a tremendous athlete and in a number of schools are uh, recruiting you at a number of positions. Of course, quarterback, uh, wide receiver, some teams want to like you at uh, safety as well. How did that kind of future position and where schools viewed you, how much of that was a factor in your ultimate decision? Yeah, I mean, it was a tough 
it was a tough decision in itself, uh, just figuring out which position I wanted to play, you know, on the school that I wanted to play at. Um, it's, it's one of those weird things that, like, not a lot of kids go through. Um, there are some kids that, you know, go through the process of, okay, am I going to play offense or defense? Or, okay, am I going to play receiver or running back? Or, okay, am I going to play safety or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but it's just weird for me because I'm being recruited as two on offense and then one on defense. So it's like, it's kind of a weird thing. And, I mean, quarterback's a position that uh, obviously you have to have different tools and different skills, a, a different skill set necessary. So, um, it's just kind of, it, it was a weird decision. Um, it was a tough one. Um, but I think that uh, Arizona State and the rest of or all the coaches, they helped make that decision a lot, uh, a lot more easier because, um, you know, once I sat down with Coach Ward, he made that decision a lot more clear to me. And, um, you know, he did it. So he made the decision to, to stop playing quarterback in high school to play receiver. And so um, once I heard that, once I saw that their plans for me were were were, were really big to them, then that's that's kind of when I knew. That's kind of when that flip, uh, that switch flipped in my head. You know, speaking of Coach Ward, of course, you know, making that uh, that uh, switch and even, you know, he's seen some time uh, behind center for Georgia. I believe he had a through for 400 yards in one game at one point. But, yeah. you know, having a guy like that who who's blazed that path and obviously went on to a Hall of Fame caliber career, uh, how much did that, you know, you mentioned kind of that switch flip. What were some of the things that he outlined, uh, you know, in those discussions and getting to know him that made you so comfortable with, you know, coming to Arizona State to play receiver? Yeah, I mean, him and Coach Dillingham, uh, him and Coach Dillingham from – the get go always said like how they thought that I was a great uh, athlete and just how they thought that you know I was tremendous on the field. But they think that uh, I'm I'm a I'm an NFL caliber guy, and I mean that's really important to hear a, a coach that is such at a, such a high level um, and a player that played at such a high level, the highest level there is, and did it well for a long time. I mean to hear them say those things and to genuinely show me the plan behind it and to show how much they meant that. Uh, I mean that that means the world. I mean. I feel like that everything was genuine in what they're saying. Um, and I mean, obviously I got to put in the work, nothing's going to be handed to me and I'm not expecting that. But um, I feel like, like I said, their plan for me and everything else, I feel like it was all genuine. So, I mean, that means the world to me. You mentioned Coach Ward and his resume and just, you know, of course, outline the plan for you. But you know that, you know, come next year, you're going to be coached by a guy who's got a Super Bowl MVP trophy on, right. on his mantle. A uh, thousand receptions in the league. Well, you know, what does that just you know, like mean to you to have that kind of uh, guy, uh, you know, kind of mentoring you and uh, helping to guide your path towards Sundays? I mean, it means, like I said before, I mean, it means the world to me. I feel like uh, everything that they said were, was really genuine, um, and I feel like. There, I mean, there's nothing like, okay, hey, I'm going to tell you this so that you can get here on campus and then, you know, it's something completely different. I feel like uh, they're honest. I mean, he was like, you know, we already have a quarterback committed um, and, you know, we need a kid like your, w with your size and your speed who's very unique and who uh, has a lot of intelligence like you. I mean, he said that's a rare combination. And, you know, when you really step back and think of it, it, it is. I mean, and, and that, that makes me feel a lot better because I feel like my ceiling is a little bit higher at receiver. It, it, it may be a little bit higher at receiver than it might be at quarterback. And, I mean, like I said, I mean, my ultimate goal is to make it to the NFL. And so I'm, I'm willing to do the things necessary to get there um, if that means setting aside my quarterback dreams. So, Of course, uh, Heinz Ward made his name, you know, not just, you know, catching the ball, but blocking downfield, being the NFL's right. premier blocking receiver. And he even has a phrase he rolled out during spring practice of you got to block to get the rock. You know, mm -hmm. making that transition, you know, over to, to wide receiver, you know, going from quarterback, a guy who has his hands on the ball every play, but to a receiver that, you know, obviously going to be a, a target in the passing game. But what's your thoughts on just kind of, you know, being able to do that dirty work, the stuff that doesn't necessarily show up in the stat sheets and, and helping the block downfield? Yeah, I mean, I've always been a guy that's willing to put my life on the line for my teammates. And I'm, I'm going to say true to that. I mean, even at the quarterback position, shoot, if I had to, you know, throw a pass and, you know, we got a reverse coming around, you know, trick play or something, I got to go block a guy, you know, I'm willing to do that because, I mean, you know, whatever, whatever, I'm, I'm willing to win by whatever means necessary, I guess I should say. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, honestly, the transition will be physically, like, as physically hard for me. I feel like it'll be mentally, I mean, the way I approach the game, because it is different coming in through meetings, coming in through practice and, uh, you know, thinking like you're a quarterback, having a quarterback's kind of mindset. I mean, I guess it's going to carry over to my receiver. 
uh, to the receiver position, but it's just a little different because, I mean, you do have to do more dirty work and you do have to be a little bit more of a dog or whatever you would say. So um, I guess I guess that is going to be a little different, but I feel like that's where it's going to be more so different is mentally and not physically. You speak because I feel the... like I feel like I have I feel like I, I I mean I still need to build on everything but I feel like I I do have the physic uh the physical capability of already stepping out on the field as a receiver. You know, speaking of that that mental aspect, you I mean of course receivers nothing new to you. I believe in uh, your sophomore season that you played receiver got some all regional conference uh, type of honors uh, for that as as well. But you know having that that uh, that experience at quarterback and receiver, you know how you know tra- making that transition to receiver at the college level. How much do you think that quarterback mindset and just that, that preparation, how you see the field in the game, is going to help you when you're lining up at receiver? Yeah, I think it's going to help it. Like, I think it's going to help it a lot because I feel like as a quarterback, you, you're thinking like a quarterback, so you're kind of on the same wavelength. And I mean, that's obviously very important to have a great uh, a connection with your quarterback as a receiver. Um, so I think it's going to help because I mean, I'm going to know where to find the zone. You know, if it's man you know, how to play it and everything like that. Um, so I, I feel like it's going to help me find space and it's going to help me uh, know how to run my routes and kind of how to how to be on the same wavelength as my quarterback and, 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 and run the offense that, we're, you know, we're running. So Obviously, tremendous athleticism and, you know, the coaching staff obviously sees you great potential on Sunday. For any, any of our listeners or viewers that have, you know, have not seen in action or maybe caught your huddle film, give our, give our, our folks a self-scouting report. What are the things that you bring to the field? Uh, I would say, I mean, I would say honestly, I could beat you just as well with my uh, my legs as my my arm. Um, and I feel like a lot of people miss out on that. I feel like you know some some teams try to play me this past year, um, and they try to you know we're going to take away the run, we're going to try and fluster him. But I feel like in that you know we have great receivers. I have great receivers that are catching the ball for me, and that I trust them. So I feel like that's that's a big takeaway that I could beat you with my arm just as well as my legs. Um, and I feel like ultimately, like I said, like I'm doing anything to win. And I feel like you can see that on the film a little bit. Um, if it means, you know, going through a guy, if it means, uh, you know, blocking. I mean, obviously, you know, quarterbacks don't get to do that a lot. But if that's what it means, you know, by any means necessary. And so, I mean, I feel like that's that's the thing that sticks out on my film. And I mean, a lot of the stuff doesn't go out on my film. Like it doesn't show that we, we started off the season 0-3 um, and had to overcome a bunch of adversity. But um, in that, like, I had to over, we we as a team had to overcome a lot of adversity, but I did too internally, and I had to be. Uh, I was forced to become a better leader and lead my guys. So, uh, I mean, you know, I, I feel like those are like the, the the main things that stick out on my film, though. So, you know, speaking of that zero and three start, you know that that you know, obviously some hurdles there, but then you guys reel off ten straight, hoist the six uh, A state title there. You know, what were some of the lessons that you learned from that? Obviously some early setbacks, but you guys never gave it gave in and ultimately you came away with a with a championship. Yeah, I mean just really just learning how to be a better leader. I mean, you can't lead guys all the same way because I mean everybody's different everybody comes from you know different backgrounds and and things like that so uh, I I really had to learn how to how to lead a little bit better and how to lead certain guys a certain way because not everyone responds to the situation is the same so uh, you know some guys were down some guys you know wanted to quit some guys just wanted to stop playing and you know kind of just be like all right this season's messed up like it's whatever and you know I, I I really got on them and I made sure to stay on them to to really remind them the importance of our season and tell them you know that it's not over we still got 10 more games or however many um and so we just got to keep our head down we just got to keep working all all everything will fall in place just the way we want it to if we keep working because i mean that's that's just the thing i've learned i guess the most too is just you know if you keep working at something then you know my dad always says hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard and i really believe in that you know that hard work beats talent so of course, on the way there, you put together, I believe, 55 total touchdowns, some yeah. absolute <laughs> video game type of numbers there. You get named the Gatorade uh, Player of the Year for New Mexico. What, what did that honor mean? Obviously, you know, you, you said you, know, you have a team-first attitude and getting, getting those wins is the most important. But to be able to do that in such a way that you have that individual recognition and that individual production, you know, what did that, what did that mean to you? I mean, it meant a lot to me. I'm very blessed to be in the position that I'm in. And I know that I wake up every day thanking God for the position that I'm in, but um, honestly, I feel like I wouldn't have I, I wouldn't have gotten here without my teammates. I mean, and my coaches. I mean, we had to figure out a way to to be a better offense. I had to figure out a way to be a better quarterback. And like I said about leading and everything, I had to figure out a way to be a better leader. And we had to figure out ways to overcome our adversity. And so um, I feel like 
you know, it, it feels great, but I wouldn't have gotten here with my teammates and I and I know that and my family and everything, all my support system. So um, I'm really thankful. I'm thankful for everything. I'm thankful to be in the position that I'm in. Uh, but I do know that, you know, I wouldn't have gotten here without everybody else. So on this roster so far, there's, a, of course, a lot of California guys, a lot of Texas guys, some Arizona yeah. guys. Not a whole lot of, of, of folks from New Mexico, and not, <laughs> not necessarily, a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, not necessarily a national hotbed of talent. But there's, of course, you know, over the over the decades, there have been some real absolute dudes that have come out of your state. What's the football culture like in New Mexico? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's better than what people expect. I mean, obviously, you hear New Mexico football, and you're like, oh, I mean, that's not good. Like, do they even have six A out there? You know, guys ask me that. <laughs> Some guys are like, is that in Mexico? Like, so it's crazy. I mean, people don't really know. Uh, we got some ballers coming out of here. I mean, I feel like there's going to be a lot of more guys to come out and a lot of guys to shock a lot of people uh, just because I feel like people don't look as us, at us as a football state. And I mean, you know, we're not the top dogs. We're not, you know, Texas or California, obviously. You know, we're not Florida, any of that stuff. So, I mean, I feel like there's some guys. Though. I feel like there's some guys that can go play in those states and do just what we're doing uh, here. So, I mean, I feel like there's going to be some dudes coming out, I feel like. So I'm just glad to rep. I'm just glad to be a representative of my state, and I'm proud to be uh, a New Mexican. So, of course, you know, next fall you'll be, or in 2025, you'll be uh, playing in the Big 12 Conference. You know, what are your thoughts on, on uh, you know, ultimately stepping up to the big stage and in the Big 12? Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I feel like it's going to be a good experience. I feel like it's going to it's going to be a good. Uh, conference to go to and I'm just excited I'm ready to play and I'm ready to go see what uh I'm just ready to go you know live that lifestyle and everything so I'm I'm beyond excited for sure and then when you look at look ahead to this uh, this fall your final season at the high school level and you know, some what are some of the goals you have set for yourself for you know for your, yourself for your team and also the things that you want to accomplish to prepare yourself to make that jump up next year to major college football yeah I mean I just I, I think that I want to go. I definitely want to go undefeated, and I definitely want to win another state championship. Um, I think we we got to just put in the work that we we we've been putting in, and I think we'll be just fine. I mean, I think we got to, you know, put in perspective that everybody's gunning for us, and everybody, you know, we have that target on our back. And our coach tells us that every day. Um, but we gotta we gotta practice like it. We gotta you know live like it pretty much. So um, I think I, I honestly think that nobody uh, in the state could beat us, but we could beat ourselves if that makes sense. So. Um, I, I just feel like we got to keep working and not get in our own way. Um, but as far as goals go, I mean, just to win another state championship. Um, and I mean, I feel like if we do that, all the other personal accolades will come. So I'm not really worried about it. But I mean, those are always nice. Like, I, I, I really am appreciative of all that. And that is nice. So that would be nice to win all the other personal accolades I've won um, again. So.